Hello, friends. Welcome back to our show, Text Time with Anil Grandi. I'm your host, Varish. Last week, we discussed tax credits and deductions. And this week, we have come up with another very interesting topic, HSA. What is HSA? It's health saving account. So our renowned tax expert, Anil Grandi, will share knowledge on that today. I'll brief you about Anil Grandi expertise. Anil Grandi is Forbes 2022 official member with 17 years of experience as finance controller, CFO, and senior executive positions. He has worked in Amazon, Starbucks, PwC, and Sun Edison. His passion is to help community, business owners, CFO, individuals increase their revenues and profits day by day. He has also written so many articles and has been a guest speaker for many national level events and media channels. So welcome Anil Grandi to our show. So friends, let's welcome our expert, Mr. Anil Grandi. Thank you, Varish. Thanks for joining today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Health risks and uncertainties are a part of life, and the past two years of pandemic are a living example of that. Knowing the fact that we and our loved ones are adequately covered for any unforeseen health event uh, gives us much needed peace of mind. So in today's session, we are going to discuss with Anil about HSA, health saving account. Who's eligible? Why HSA? Is it needed? What are the benefits of having an HSA? So Anil, let's start with that. What is HSA? HSA, I will just explain as per IRS, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Health savings account is a tax exempt trust or custodial account. Mm -hmm. You set up with a qualified HSA trustee to pay or reimburse certain medical expenses you incur. You must be an eligible individual to qualify for an HSA. Okay, but assume like I'm a layman. So explain in layman terms. <laughs> sure, Varish. So like, uh, like I said, we all, like you, uh, like you said and uh, in the beginning, we all incur a lot of medical expenses ranging from band-aids to surgeries. Mm -hmm. All of us, all of us in general, we pay from our pocket, which is a tax paid money. So for which we, whatever money we give, we have it in the pocket. Technically, it is tax paid money. Like if you are in a W-2, after tax deductions, you get some money. That's called paying from your out-of-pocket. Or you may be using your out-of-pocket money to pay those medical expenses, or you may be using some insurance coverage. As but the Congress has come up with a great way, with a great strategy. It says that you can open, individuals can open HSA account and they can use this account to pay those expenses rather than paying from your uh, after tax paid money. And HSA is also a great tax saving tool, tax advantage and the wealth building tool. One of the best tool, one of the best tax strategy everyone mm -hmm. should consider to have it. Okay, nice, nicely explained for us. So how are HSA tax beneficial for all of us? HSA, uh, whatever money you contribute to your HSA account, once you open, once you're eligible, it has triple treat. It has three, three advantages. Advantage number one, whatever money you put it into that bucket, that account, you get a tax deduction. And then that money can be invested into any investment account, maybe a stock brokerage account, mm -hmm. and it grows tax-free. Every year it grows, grows, grows. You don't need to pay taxes on that as long as you use that money for the qualified health care expenses. So you can use it anytime in your lifetime, and it has three advantages. Get it tax-free, grow tax-free, take out the money also at tax-free, for your medical expenses. There is no other tax saving tool like this. Oh, wonderful. That's a good information for all of us. Mm -hmm. So why does the government offer such tax benefits in the first place? <laughs> so okay. the federal government and insurance companies are encouraging greater participation in mm -hmm. customer driven healthcare plans. Mm -hmm. So when you pay from your pocket, you are more cautious. Mm -hmm. So like example, I will tell you, you can open this account, HS account, only when you have high deductible medical insurance plan. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Your out-of-pocket expenses are more. 
I will, I want to give one example. If everything is being taken care of by insurance companies, you mm-hmm. go and visit your doctors, mental practitioners more frequently because it's a free for you or its cost is taken care of by insurance. But mm-hmm. if they say that you have to pay from your pocket, then you re- you are a bit more cautious. You try to do some home remedies or you may go and buy some medicine over the counter. So that will help you to number of visits you make in a year to an hospital so in summary if we have a high deductible medical plan the the support from the insurance company is a bit lower compared to other plans you need to pay more from your out of pocket expenses so but only when you do that you i mean when, then you are you are more cautious about spending money for your medical so then that is why government wants to increase this habit so when you pay from your pocket you uh, you are more cautious so then if you are doing this if you are having a high deductible medical plan then only you can open a health savings account otherwise you can't open it so mm-hmm. got it got it so like who is eligible to contribute to hsa there are few things you point you need to consider you to meet the condition there are few points you need to meet so to contribute to hsa number 1 you need to have a high deductible health plan as i was explaining hd mm-hmm. is called hd hp plan high deductible plan whenever you go and opt for a health insurance plan for mm-hmm. through your employer or your self employed or through a marketplace everywhere there is a health uh, high deductible medical plan is also all the time available you need to go and choose that one number 2 you are not supposed to covered by any other plans like example in a family husband and wife if spouse is covered I mean, uh, if spouse can have a different tax for health plan you can have a separate health plan but mm-hmm. you can choose high deductible medical plan but mm-hmm. you should not be part of your spouse health plan so there you shouldn't get any other coverages you should uh, you should have only one health insurance coverage for this and the third point you are not expected to register for medicare benefits so once you retire you may start getting medicare benefits but you are not supposed to register or enroll for the medicare and mm-hmm. the last one is you are not supposed to be dependent on any other tax returns so mm-hmm. like if you are a kid or if you are dependent on some other tax return so then you cannot claim you cannot open a, a hsa account so okay so what is like high deductible health plan yes as i was saying always multiple different types of health insurance plans are available for everyone whether you are an w2 employee or you are a self employed uh, mm-hmm. business owner so in that there are in the list of available tax health plans one specific plan always offers high deductible but low premium so you pay only lower premium every month but there is a very high deductible for you so and generally the typically these plans covers only preventive services and mm-hmm. the minimum deductible for these plans are 2800 dollars for a family and for uh, for individual it is 1400 dollars it means only after meeting your deductibles then all insurance will come uh, companies will come forward and they will help you so on uh, taking care of some cost question is like why are the americans so obsessed with apple products <laughs> good care good question varish yes. so i still remember one proverb when i was young my mom used to say um a, every day a day a apple will will keep you away from the doctor yes. so that is what the apple products are so why americans like more uh, apple products are because we can't afford our health insurance in america health insurance or health related expenses are very expensive in america so that's why americans love apple products <laughs> but it's a very good one varish <laughs> very true very true let's go back to the hsa how much can be contributed to hsa yes um it every year it changes subject to inflation so for the year last year 2021 you can contribute up to 7200 and for the year 2022 you can contribute up to 7300 dollars if you are filing a single tax as a single 
then it is a $3,600 for the last year and for the current year 2022, it is $3,650. So whatever money you are contributing, the $7,200 you are contributing, you are going to enjoy the tax benefits, maybe 30%, 32, 35, whatever the tax rate you are, at the federal and also at the state level, you are going to enjoy the tax benefits on this contribution amount. Okay. So yeah, to avail the benefits of HSA, what is the deadline to contribute to HSA? Yes. So this is one of the last minute to-dos for any of you guys if, uh, for the previous year. You have time till April 15th, 2022 to claim tax reduction for the previous year, 2021. So it's a very good thing. And for this year, because of there's a, it's a public holiday is coming up, the due date is April 18th of the 2022 for the previous year. Again, for the current year, you have time till next year, April. So, so we can we can fill it anytime this year also? Yes, the... correct. You can do it, but uh, yeah, you can you can contribute it if you already have an HSA account. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice information. So you mentioned that we must not be covered under other health coverages, except what is permitted on, under the other health coverages as described by the IRS. So what does that mean? Okay, so as I say that you are not covered by other health insurance programs. It means like if it's very common, husband and wife both might be working. Husband company also offers a health insurance plan. Spouse company also offers a health insurance plan. But so if you want to go for high deductible medical plan, individually you can go, but you are not supposed to be on the coverage being opted by your spouse. So they shouldn't be, you should not have double coverage. You should have only one coverage. But there are some exceptions on this. So exceptions are like any other insurance, like if you are part of workers' compensation insurance or if there are any insurance coverage you have specifically for the disease or illness, those are uh, uh, or some dental insurance, disability insurance, long-term care insurance uh, or any other small health non-health related i mean non-health care month or month those things are you can have those insurances then you can also have this insurance also but the only thing is you cannot have health insurance from the two service providers okay nice so what are the uh, what are the benefits of contributing to hsa yes so this is what this is the core of this session today so right. as i said in the beginning Whenever mm -hmm. you contribute up to $7,200 for the last year, $7,300 for the current year, you enjoy the tax benefits that itself could be a couple of thousands of dollars. Then whatever money you earn, earn on this investment, maybe you are investing in the stock market or you're investing in some bonds, then mm -hmm. whatever interest or the dividends you earn on this money in this account is completely tax-free as long as you are using the money for your only medical expenses, the qualified medical expenses. That is the first advantage. The second advantage is when you contribute, you don't have to use the money by December 31st of this year. If these HSA contributions will never expire. So mm -hmm. it, uh, unlike FSA, it carry over to the next year, next year, next year, next year, and you have time to use it in your lifetime. And, and also, uh, HSA balances, you can use it for any medical expenses for you, for your spouse, and also for your dependents, even though your dependents doesn't have high deductible medical plan. Like I was saying that spouse and kids may have a separate medical insurance plan, but you can have a separate medical insurance plan. This your HSA account can be used for your spouse and for our dependents also. And the other thing is, if you have some HSA account and you already have some contributions, but you have not used it, but you have to change your employer or you are retired, but still your back account balance is still active, you can use this money as long as you survive. And so, and the and the last next thing is for. FSA, this is a family savings account, which is almost like an HSA with similar terms. Mm -hmm. Unlike FSA, you don't need to maintain all your receipts because for when you ever open an HSA account, you get a one debit card type one card. Go and swipe the card whenever you have some medical expenses. That's it. You don't have to submit any of the receipts whenever you use your debit card for the payments. Okay. Okay. 
that's a nice information. So what are the expenses come under the qualified me- medical expenses? Yes. So it comes it, uh, under qualified medical, it, co- it covers deductibles. So whatever amount you have to pay as a deductible for, uh, in, uh, in line with your health insurance plan. Deductibles are covered, co-payments are covered, Co-insurance is covered, out-of-pocket medical costs are covered, or acupuncture expenses are covered, ambulance costs are covered, doctor visit doctor visits are covered, hearing aids, prescription drugs, psychological therapy or therapy or qualified long-term care services all come under qualified medical expenses. The list is extensive, and you can get the entire list from the IRS publication. 969 just google search nirs publication 969 you have a big list you can you can you can use it for any of those expenses wonderful wonderful so what happens if funds are withdrawn to be used for unqualified medical expenses yes as i say that as long as you use for medical expenses it is debt it is tax exempted but if you have withdrawn for non-medical expenses that is taxable on top you are also expected to pay 20% penalty on early withdrawal. But if you are 65 years or above, you are there won't be any penalty, but you will be paying taxes on the amount of withdrawal, whatever you do. Okay, so let's say any guy is 45 year old or 50 year old, so they have to pay the penalty. Yes, if they withdraw money for non-medical expenses. 65. Yes, yeah, 65, 65. Yeah. 65, right. Okay. So, uh, where and how can an HSA account be opened? Mm-hmm. So, you can open an HSA account mm-hmm. with any IRS approved custodian or trustees, like any federal insured, federally insured banks or credit unions or qualified insurance companies offer HSA account. And mm-hmm. whenever uh, 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 and whatever money, when, whenever you contribute and whenever you take the money out, they do also send some tax forms, which are very important, which are which have to be shared with your CPA or a tax pro whenever you file your tax returns. So that's good information. So does it make sense to have an HSA if one has a lot of medical expenses? Mm, answer is, this changes from person to person. Okay. I cannot vouch for every case, but high deductible policy you know, so whenever you go for high deductible medical insurance policy, the mm-hmm. premiums are low, out-of-pocket expenses are more. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you do also get tax benefits on your HSA contributions. That is a very really big thing. And that money grows tax-free for a very long time. And that is, and you as long as you use the money for your, any of the medical expenses in the future, there's a big tax savings. So you uh, it, so personally, I recommend everyone to look into your numbers, whatever the premium differences, because each insurance company has a different premium amounts. So you need to compare it between high deductible medical plan, non-plan to the comparison of cost analysis, cost versus benefit analysis, then take the right right step. But if you are not having a lot of medical expenses in a casual area, typically, I strongly recommend you to consider HSA. But if you have more medical expenses or if you are expecting some big surgeries, then I recommend you to do your math, then go for HSA or not HSA, I will leave it to you. Wonderful. That's a good information. So is HSA contribution made only through employer? Uh, answer is no. So okay. if you have, if your employer is offering HSA, HSA that's a straightforward, great, please go and get it. And most of the times, whenever an employer offers, they also do some contributions, maybe $1,000 or $2,000, uh, they, they do also contribute. Whatever money they contribute, that is a tax-free money for you. Don't leave that money opportunity. If an employer is sponsoring something, please go and grab it. So that's a right, right please consider your uh, uh, cost, per, cost versus benefit analysis and opt in as required. If your employer is not opt in, not offering HSA, doesn't matter. As long as you have a high deductible, high deductible health insurance plan, you can go out and open an account anywhere as I explained in, in for your previous question. Nice, nice. I will check with my employer as well tomorrow. <laughs> can you talk to me? <laughs> so, uh, what happens upon the death of the HSA holder? So whenever 
at the uh, at the time of opening of hsa mm -hmm. you do you are expected to designate a beneficiary name so you have to tell who is a beneficiary if you add your spouse as a beneficiary once you if you expire the entire money goes to your wife and it is considered as a, your wife's or spouse hsa account so she can also use it with all meeting whatever i said like for her expenses for her dependent expenses or for he, her or she uh, he uh, his expenses he can use it and for suppose if uh, uh, if you have not add if you have not add any beneficiary in your hs account then it is considered as a taxable event so it's very important to add your spouse as a beneficiary whenever you open your hs account <clears throat> nice information so this is such an enriching session as always anil so let's conclude with your final input and final words from your side before we conclude the session the first thing i want to say is if you have high deductible medical insurance plan or if your employer is sponsoring one consider open an hsa account not only for the tax benefits you are also building a tax free wealth that is very very important mm -hmm. and the and also choose the plan which where you can where you have an option to go and invest this money in the stock market once open an account just in the very long run because you have a lot of time for your retirement and you can start investing in even in the key companies key uh, blue chip companies in stock market and let it grow let it grow let it grow don't use your hsa money for your day to day transactions you can use if you start using the day to day for the day to day transactions you are missing an opportunity of tax free growth so mm -hmm. use your don't use it invest and leave it let it grow let it grow let it grow you will anyway once you retire you will have lot of medical expenses and i recommend you to use this money at that time not now because at that time your 7000 may become a much bigger number so so this is and this is a part of your diversification i mean like uh, 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 we always recommend on uh, uh, we always recommend our clients on asset diversification or investment diversification so you, you put this consider this 7000 dollars as an investment you are diversifying your investments and you will access it only in the long run not for the short run that's it thank you very much varish and thanks for this opportunity hsa is a great tool one of the best tool irs offers goes tax free or uh, you get a tax deduction goes tax free with the not tax free there is no other great policies which can be a competitor which is competing with hsa so if if you are eligible don't miss this opportunity thank you very much varish and thanks for the opportunity to mana tv thank you thank thanks anil thanks for uh, sitting with us and giving uh, information to our viewers so friends we have come to the end of this another wonderful episode from anil grandi so we will be meeting again next week with our expert anil grandi for another topic another interesting topic and again like go to your employer find out more details about the hsa it's a wonderful tool make a use of it till then stay tuned bye see you